All right, everybody, welcome back to another video here on Financial Friends. Thank you so much for tuning in. You are tuning into another episode of The Dividend Journey, where I track a dividend portfolio and build my passive income. If you want to go ahead and join the friend group, subscribe to Financial Friends. We talk everything business, finance, and investing related. And real quick, before we get into this video, go ahead and hit that like button. It takes just a second and it helps push this video to more people. I greatly appreciate your support. What are we going to be doing in this video? We're going to do a smidgen, a real quick update on the dividend portfolio, and then we're quickly going to address some of the earnings that have been happening in the market, what earnings are coming up, and what I'm going to be doing to react to either buy, sell, trade those earnings. Let's go ahead and get right into the video. First things first, we added to John Deere, and we also added to SCHD two positions that I love. Obviously, SCHD is a buy no matter what is going on in the market. We were able to average down our position, meaning we dropped our average price a little bit, which is fantastic. We always love to do that. Obviously, allows us to buy those dividends at a cheaper price. John Deere was down significantly today. Um, you could see, obviously, we're almost down 7%. I think the stock was down around 5-ish or so percent on the day. Um, reason being, fertilizer prices are skyrocketing, and I think there's some people out there worried that fertilizer prices are going to eat a larger portion of spending uh, with these farmers instead of on John Deere equipment. Again, I am thinking not five years out, not 10 years out. I'm thinking 25 years out fertilizer prices today. What's happening today is not going to affect it. I've done my research. John Deere is a fantastic company that I want to own for a long time. So we bought some more. In terms of how that affects diversification in the portfolio, it helps even things out a little bit. John Deere was our smallest position. It's now up there. Um, actually, our one, two, three, four, our fifth largest position in the portfolio at the moment. We're going to go ahead and probably not purchase waste management, 3M, Apple, John Deere or Johnson & Johnson for a little while as we increase our position and our ETFs, hoping that those can be 50% of the portfolio. Now, we said we're going to talk about earnings. What exactly are we going to talk about? Well, Johnson & Johnson lowered 2022 revenue and earnings expectations and stopped giving COVID vaccine sales guidance. I no longer care about the COVID vaccine sales guidance. I talked a little bit about this this week in finance. It's just not something that even really needed to be reported in the first place, kind of capitalizing off something that is unfortunate. Um, however, it's not going to make up a large portion of their sales. They're probably just trying to hide that and in hopes that it doesn't, you know, decrease the stock for any reason, because my guess is these sales are not doing as well as they once were. Not a big deal for me. However, they did lower revenue and earnings expectations, lowered sales for 2022 from 95.8 billion to 94.8. So about a billion dollar decrease. And then they also decreased full year earnings per share by about 25%. So it was in this $10.40 to $10.60 range. It's now in the $10.15 to $10.35 range. They're earning on their shares. I'm not really worried about this 25 cents because again, I'm focused on 25 years down the road, not what happens this year. What I am concerned about, but what I see as a positive is that they are recognizing the inflationary pressure and supply constraints. This is a business and a company that's going to continue to need to provide their services, inflation or not, supply chain constraints or not. I'm not super worried about this, but I am happy that they're providing some form of, yes, we recognize this is happening, but we're not going to, you know, we're not going to be afraid. Now, on the news that they're lowering expectations, they did miss on revenue, not by much, um, and they did beat on EPS still. So still an overall good earnings. This company, since adding it to the portfolio, has been chugging along up 10.7%. It's our biggest gainer in the portfolio. I'm going to keep buying this company. I've talked a lot about when the company splits. Not going to address that in this video. We'll address that in a later video when it does happen. Coca-Cola beat on estimates as revenue jumped 16%. Reading from the screen here, unit case volume rose 8% um, in drinks like Powerade and Coke Zero Sugar, driving that. They did also beat on EPS and beat on revenue as well. Now you might be curious why I'm talking about this, why it even matters. Well, I'm glad you asked. 
We own a lot of SCHD in the portfolio and the largest position in SCHD at the moment is Coca-Cola. We're also going to be seeing Pepsi report and they are the next biggest uh, position in this ETF. So I'm keeping an eye on all of these companies because these types of companies all play a role in SCHD, which is our largest position. So I like to see all of these companies do fantastic, but I also want to keep a small eye on the biggest ones because if this consumer category continues to do well, well then SCHD will be driven partly by that success. So I like to keep an eye on that. As much as people assume that, oh, well, I don't own this stock, I don't own that stock. If you own VOO, you own SCHD or VTI or any of these big broad market or S&P tracking index funds, you probably do own that company in some way or another. You're just not 100% familiar with it. So I try and stay familiar with it. In terms of what I'm doing based on these earnings and the ones coming forward, which include 3M on the day you're watching this video, Waste Management on the day you're watching this video, Apple Thursday or later this week, and then O, Realty Income Corp on May 5th, John Deere on May 20th. What am I doing in reaction to any of these? Absolutely nothing. I'm not doing anything. As I mentioned previously in the video, I'm probably not going to even be buying individual companies over the next week or two. I'm going to be increasing our position in SCHD. Why? Because we're underweight. Why? Because it's always a good time to buy SCHD. And why? Because I'm not trying to time the market. These are stocks I'm buying for the long haul and what they do this year or this quarter doesn't really actually matter or make a difference in that long game. What I am looking for is recognition and guidance. I like to see that Johnson & Johnson is lowering expectations, right? They've noticed that inflationary pressure and supply constraints are going to play a role and they were real with us. Look, we're not expecting as good of results this year. Perfectly fine. Coca-Cola, they've actually directly responded to this stating down here at some point that they do recognize that potentially we could be seeing inflation. So we're going to err towards taking price increases now so that consumers are not as shocked if we have to raise prices during recession. They're also decreasing and allowing their you know bottles or, or cans or whatever it is to be shipped or packaged into smaller packaging, helping save them money and not be forced to pass that cost on the consumers. And my assumption with that Pepsi would be probably doing the same thing. If they're not doing the same thing, that's something I wanted to know and keep an eye on as again, this is a 4.28% position within our $190 so dollars that we do have allocated to SCHD. So it's something I want to keep an eye on. With all that being said, if you didn't take anything away from this video, I am not going to be reactionary to anything that is going on in the market. I'm going to continue to buy and hold just as I've always done. And unfortunately, this series is repetitive in that aspect. We just added John Deere a couple of weeks ago. That's been the first stock we've added in a long time. Why? Because we're going to stick it through. We're going to buy companies that make money. We're going to be boring. And we're going to continue to do that over and over and over again. So with that being said, I hope that you learned something from this video and or you're able to take something away from it. If you're interested in tracking your stocks, just like I am, go ahead, hit that link down below in the description. You can go ahead and join the dividend tracker. It helps support me. I greatly, greatly appreciate that. And as always, I hope that you all smash that like button and have a great one. Take care.